Good morning again. <laughs> Before we continue, let's welcome Jose, Seth, and Molly. Let's give them a great hand. <laughs> Thank you very much for visiting Grace and Truth Gospel Church. We're always glad that there are new faces in this church. Not, beca not, not because we're not glad with the old faces, but we're always joyful <laughs> whenever we see new faces. I do hope that this is not just a one-time thing, but it's a beginning of a long journey with us. Amen? Hallelujah. All for His glory. Amen. Amen. So let us, uh, if you have your Bible with you, could you please read with me Romans 5, chapter 8 and 9. The Bible says, But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, ready? Let me repeat. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. Hallelujah. You all know that Cedric is my son, right? For the benefit of uh, Jose, Seth, and Molly, he's the uh, young guys beside me. And as a father, I love him. I love him so much that I will do everything for him. Mickey is also my son. I will do the same thing. And you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know for a fact that I love you and I will do everything for you. But let's put some assumption. For example, all of a sudden, one of you have a son suddenly needed a kidney. And it so just happened that Cedric or Matthew, who are my sons, matches that kidney. Right? And you come to me and you say, can I? And I say, honestly, at the back of my mind, I will have second thoughts. You know why? Because it would more or less jeopardize the life of my children, right? And let us assume that I agreed to it. Then I have to talk to my son, and we still don't know whether they will agree to it because... Hey, it might jeopardize their life. But that is me, Rick, the sinner who was just justified by the blood of Christ. That's just me. But let's look at another scenario. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, who have a son, and his name is Jesus. And he knows very well that man can never enter the kingdom of God by their own merits. The Bible tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all know that as Christians. But at that point in time, probably people doesn't know at that point in time. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. But God the Father knows it very well. And the penalties of, uh, uh, of sin is death. Condemnation. Father God knows that very well. That's why He called Jesus, my son. There is no way that Matthew could enter the kingdom of God on his own. There's no way that Eutychia could enter the kingdom of God of his, on, his, on her own. So my son, go down to earth and die on the cross for them. And here's the icing on the cake. God and man at that point in time are enemies. Can you just imagine? People can do something to his friends, to people that, he's, that he loves. Just like my illustration. But when it comes to a certain point, we might have second thoughts. 
But God the Father in heaven, who loves us so much, sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. Without hesitation, even though He knows that we, we men are His enemies. Amen to that? And it is not just an ordinary death. It is a death that reconciles us with God. And it is not just a death that is simple. Unlike nowadays, there's what we call, uh, what do you call that? Lethal injection wherein you go to sleep. No, no, no. He suffered. He was ridiculed. He was hurt. Man did everything to him. Everything that's painful. Even the thorns. He has to die on the tree, on the cross. Nailed. How painful is that? But in all obedience, Jesus Christ has to do that. Because He has to pay the penalties for our sin. He has to be sin for us. For us unworthy sinners. For us unworthy sinners. He has to go through that. He is blameless. He is sinless. He is almighty God. But He has to go through that. For you and me. To be saved from the condemnation of our sin. If I put a courtroom scenario, if we face our Creator, say for example, Sedvik. Sedvik, yo! Stand up. You know what? When he sees Cedric Yao, the ultimate judge, he will just say, guilty! But praise the Lord, there is somebody who is going to pay the penalty. And it's called Jesus. That's why he says, your honor, if it's a courtroom scenario, we know very well that Cedric is a sinner, but he accepted me as his Lord and Savior. So, I paid for his sin. Let him enter the kingdom of God. And hallelujah. Hallelujah for that. Because without that atoning death, there can never be reconciliation for us with God. And that is the very reason why we gather together in the Lord's table. That is the very reason we do this every week, so that we will be reminded of that beautiful, beautiful death. It looks horrible. Well, for those who doesn't have the wisdom, it, doesn't, it looks horrible. But for us who are saved, it's a beautiful death because we should be there in that cross. But instead, Jesus Christ took it for us. And that's the atoning death. That's why we celebrate. That's why we gather. That's why we toast the blood of Christ. And we eat His body. Take the bread, the element, symbolic of His body that He has given for us. Amen? So let us all be reminded that we're not doing this just for the emotion. We're doing this because we are to be reminded of how much love the Father gave us and how much suffering Christ went through. For us to be saved. Amen? So that's the atoning death. And what about the other one? The covenant. Oh boy. It's a fulfillment of a promise that God made in Isaiah. And he promised that he will be merciful and he will not see our sins no more. As long as you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the condition. It's not applicable to all. If you're in the world, <laughs> wait a minute. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, He made a promise, He made a covenant, confirmed by the blood of Jesus, that He will be merciful to all of us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's prepare to come to the Lord's table. It's not for everyone. Number one, we should be born again. And being born again means you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
Amen? Why? Because you have to understand first what you're celebrating. Can you just imagine you're celebrating with somebody and you don't know what? So if you're not saved, you will not know it. Amen? But if you're saved, you know. You know very well what you're celebrating. Amen? Number two, when you come to the Lord's table, please do so in a judged condition. You have to judge yourself. And what are you going to judge? You have to look for yourself, deep inside your heart, sins that you have committed. There's no such thing as a, as a, 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 a small sin and big sin. There's no such thing as a white lie and a bad lie. These are all sins. Worse is you rationalize. Let me give a specific example of rational. I'm guilty of this. Every year. Every year. It's tax season, right? And as we prepare our taxes, I said, oh my God, I have to pay so much taxes. But the government only gives it to people who don't deserve it. It's called rationalizing your sin. Right? Give to Caesar what is due to Caesar. Respect the authority. It's God's command. And let God do His job for us. Amen? Do not rationalize lest you want to get lost in the web of confusion. Amen? Amen. So let's close our eyes and meditate and ask the Lord for, our, for His forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we praise You and we thank You. For this beautiful moment. We praise you and we thank you for your great love and mercy. For sending your only son Jesus. To die on the cross for us. For us unworthy sinners. We ask for your forgiveness Lord. For all of our sins. That we have committed. Whether it be being lazy in praying. Whether it be in a situation where we don't glorify you by our actions, by our thoughts, whether it be laziness in reading the Bible, whether it be acting inappropriately in front of people or being disrespectful to my parents, or whether it be about taxation, whatever it is, Lord, you know what's inside our heart, and we beg you, forgive us. And Lord God, as we come to the Lord's table, we pray, Lord, that you will always remind us in our hearts and in our mind of how much you love us and the great sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. And we pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And for all of you who wants to come to the Lord's table and share this supper, let's all stand up and go to the back. Come back to your chair. And then we will do this all together. Amen? So the elements at the, are uh, is at the back. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us remember that when we were born again, on that very day when the Lord called us, and when we, we received Him as our Lord and Savior, we have already Christ in our heart. Let us remember that this bread doesn't become the body of Christ. No. This wine does not become the blood of Christ. But we are doing this symbolically, and we are doing this in celebration so that we will be reminded of His great sacrifice in the cross. Amen? For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's all it the bread. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you should drink it in remembrance of me. Praise be to God. You may all be seated. It's a great time.